Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah the merciful the compassionate all praises to Allah the creator of the universes and their sustainer the provider of believers and unbelievers and may his choicest blessings be on the seal of his prophets the last of his messengers and his holy progeny we have been discussing that sentence in dua e kumail in which Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam teaches us to pray to Allah Allahumma aghfir li adh-dhunub allati tahbisu ad-du'a O Allah forgive me those sins which intercept my supplication Well as we have already discussed if the sins are intercepted what chance do they stand of acceptance at all We have been discussing the various sins which cause interception of our supplications. We we have discussed, for example, firstly, uh, malafides, um, bad faith in our conduct with each other. Secondly, ceasing to believe in the prayers being answered. Thirdly, hypocrisy towards brethren. fourthly delay in saying prayers and we were dealing with the last one violation of duties towards the two parents and as is very well known and so i will not take your time going through the holy verses of the holy book on the point allah has almost linked and i emphasize almost almost linked the the obedience to the parents to obedience to himself he says wala na'budu illa iya wa bil walidayni ihsana he says do not worship anybody except allah except him and be be charitable be 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 kindly to your parents wa bil walidayni ihsana do ihsan do favors to your to 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 your parents have conduct with them which is which is admirable which is beneficial to them and to you well so the two duties have been linked in the same verse and are in juxtaposition to each other so you can see how much obedience to parents is valued by Allah glorified and exalted and it is very easy to understand why Allah has created many living things like plants for example without a need need of parents separated from them the anther and the pollen are in the same plant in the same plant the reason the reason to duty in plants for parents to look after children and to nurture them and to bring them up but with men allah glorified and exalted in his uh, ultimate perfect wisdom decided he will have another human being and he will create a human being through the the machinery through the existence of another human being that auspices of the another human being has been introduced by allah in his wisdom so he creates and then he decides he will use two human beings he will use a male and a female which he need not have done uh, in surah yasin for example he says that he has created genders some within yourselves like for example the parameshwar or oh, the amoeba there isn't a male one and a female one the same paramishyam divides into two become paramishya and one remains the parent the other is the child and same with amoeba so but with humans he decided he will have a separate entity the male the father and a separate entity the mother for reasons best known to himself we 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 know some of them and can discuss them but i do not wish to enter into that discussion in order not to prolong our study of duai kumail but broadly he decided only to make the broad point he decided that he will have a father 
and a, and, and, and a mother. And the, the father will play his role, the mother will play her role, and each will be, will be rewarded by Allah, glorified and exalted. Nine months the mother carries the child, and with, with some degree of inconvenience, with some degree of sacrifice. And indeed, a delivery period is a period of, of anxiety. And accidents do happen. Allah, Allah is, 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 is the best in his knowledge. And he does what is best for the parents. However, it is a period of anxiety. And so, so the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, has a saying to, to the effect that heaven lies at the feet of the mother. Carries the baby for nine months. Ultimately, the, the, the delivery time, as I said, is an anxious time. But mostly, because it is a system that Allah has, has um, put in place, most of those deliveries result in safe, in safe deliveries, a safe birth of, 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 of a child. And then bringing up the child and, and looking after the child all this time, Allah rewards the parents immensely. With the mother, it is, it is heaven. And, and so it is with the father, because the sacrifice of the father is, 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 is also significant. But because that of the mother is, is, is uh, risky and uh, can be, can be life-threatening, they have heaven at their feet for, for, for their children, those who are obedient to them, those who sacrifice their time, their money, their pleasure for the sake of their mothers. Well, so Allah has created them as the, as the, as the, as the conduit pipe through whom he perpetuates his, his, his creation. He could have, as I said, created men in, in, in much easier ways. Kun fire kun, be and he becomes. And yet he chose this machinery. And when he chose the machinery of having the two parents, the father and the mother, to bring up the children, he has given them a status almost immediately after his. As, as we see, he talks about his worship. And we do not worship anybody except, except, except Allah. Well, so the worship, worship is really for Allah. And so is obedience. But next to him is obedience to parents. And, 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 and so he says, Almost linked to it. And if one of the two, he says, becomes aged, then do not even say off to him or her. Not even off, which is the, the, the lightest word you can use in confrontation with another, with another person. Not even that. And pray for them. Rabbi rahamhuma kama rabbayani sarira. Oh Allah, be merciful to them as they were to me when I was a little child. This is significant. It becomes a, a, a constant reminder to the, to the son and the daughter that the parents were kindly to them at a time when they were helpless. So you can see the, the, the importance Allah gives. And it's understandable because Allah, glorified and exalted, as I said, could have created man in, in, uh, independent of parents. He chose that machinery. And as he chose that machinery, he wants to make sure that he rewards them. He gives them a status almost, almost next to his, to, to, to his status vis-a-vis -vis the children. And so it becomes of paramount importance that children obey their parents, are respectful for them, to, to them, and appreciate the high level that Allah glorified and exalted has created for those parents. Hence, hence, not even oof, not even oof to the, to the parents. The point I always seek to make, to make when I discuss this at the risk of repetition is this, that um, obeying parents when you see sense in what they're asking you to do, when you see that what they're asking you to do is beneficial to you and you do it, is easy. And, 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 and its co it, compliance with such orders becomes almost second nature. And we might have done that ourselves even without the parents having asked us to do. But yet there is sawab in, in obeying them. 
even obeying them in, in, in that which you see sense in and that which you would have done anyway, done with the need of obeying parents, well, cr results in thawab from Allah, glorified and exalted, and, and, good, and, and good results from Allah. Indeed, indeed. Um, at the risk of uh, interrupting what I was saying, may I just interpose this, that the thawab in obedience to parents is so immense, so immense, that it can wipe away numerous sins. Numerous sins. Allah may forgive a son or a daughter only because they obeyed their parents and they fulfilled the wishes of their parents. He would say to them, you fulfill the wishes of your parents, I will fulfill your wishes. They may not have had the capacity and the ability to, f to forgive you and to, and, to, and to fulfill your wishes. I have and I will use that capacity to compensate you for it. And indeed, he may wash away all sins. He is merciful. He can forgive all sins. Hence, obedience to parents is of paramount importance. Almost next to obedience to Allah himself, glorified and exalted. The point I was making before I interrupted myself to interpose this thawab that there is in obedience to parents, and the, and the opportunity to wipe out our sins. And may Allah accept whatever little we have done for our parents, whatever insignificant it may be compared to what they have done for us. But may Allah accept even that and as a result forgive us all our sins. Because Allah can forgive all our sins only for, for obedience to parents. Of course, of course, obedience to Him is always paramount. Well, well, the point I was, make, I was making is that it is easy to obey parents when they are asking, to, 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 asking us to do that which we think is, is a proper thing to do, which we agree with, which we think we should be doing anyway. But it is when parents ask us to do things that we do not think is right or we do not want to do it, or we find it cumbersome, that we start arguing with them. And it becomes customary these days to, to, to reply back to parents. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. Because obedience to parents is not dependent on whether you think that what they are asking you to do is right or wrong. That judgment is not ours. The judgment is theirs. If they decide that, that uh, we should go to, to, to school at 7 o'clock and not at 7.15, then we should go at 7 o'clock. Not because they know better, not because, not because um, they have more experience, not because they are more, more knowledgeable, but because they say so. That is the paramount thing. Like, like obedience to Allah, glorified and exalted. We do not obey Allah because we agree. Ma'adullahi ta'ala with Allah. Who are we? What is our state of knowledge? We agree with Allah, glorified and exalted. And, 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 and the omniscient that he is. He is the creator. We have already discussed that aspect. He is the first and the last. So he knows what is good for us. But we do not obey Allah, glorified and exalted, because we agree with his commands. We obey Allah because that is his command. The command comes from it. That is the, the philosophy which he d d d d d twinkles down to, to parents. And, and, and with parents, our attitude must be, he is my father, she is my mother. If she, he or she asks me to do it, I will do it. Well, with that, with that philosophy in mind, we obey our parents. And if that is how we obey our parents, we get the maximum thawab that Allah glorified and exalted has kept for obedience to parents. Unquestionable, not to obey because we think it is right, making ourselves the judges of what is right, when they know so much better. They have lived the life that we are beginning to live. But apart from that consideration, they are parents. That is the paramount consideration. And Allah's command is that we obey them. That is Allah. We do not worship anybody except Allah. And then, and then he says, So, so the important thing is to create that relationship with parents in which there is obedience to them. 
I am not saying we should never disagree with parents, but there is a way of disagreeing with parents. There is a way of politely making a suggestion, making no more than a suggestion, that if instead of doing this, we did this, would this not be better? Would this not be more convenient? And they are always open to discussion. They are always open to, 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 to seeing what, the, the, what, what is more convenient to, to, to their own children. They are loving parents. They are always loving. You might think they are, they are, they are imposing their orders, but they do so lovingly. The, 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 the intention in their heart is love for their children. As Allah loves us 70 times more than even our mother loves us. So the important thing is obedience to parents, accepting what they say, fulfillment of their wishes. And if we lack in that, then Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam fears that there might be tahbisud dua, there might be habasa, there, must be, there might be an impediment and an obstruction to our duas even reaching Allah glorified and exalted, in which case there will be no chance of acceptance at all because the dua has not even reached Allah, glorified and exalted. Well, one can go on and on on this subject. As I said, each of these matters raises, raises a vast subject for discussion. But I will move on so that we make progress with Dua'i Kumail. And the, the fifth istighfar that he teaches us is, Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub allati tanzilul bala. Allahumma fir li adhunub allati tunzilul bala. O Allah, forgive such of my sins as bring down misfortunes, as bring down affliction. Well, as we have already seen, and I will not detain you on this discussion, these sins are sins which bring down immediate um, reaction from Allah glorified and exalted and immediate consequences in this world. <clears throat> well, the, the, the consequence that is envisaged by Amir al-Mu'mineen salam in this aspect is tunzilul bala, that brings down misfortunes, brings down trials, <clears throat> because another meaning of bala is trial. Well, that is what we do not want in this world. We do not want misfortunes coming down. And when they come down immediately, on commission of offence, how serious must those offences be? And let us take time, uh, a few minutes, to, to, to consider what according to ahadith, uh, again in Anisul Layl, those are the ahadith that I'm relying on for this discussion, what are these sins that Amir al-Mu'mineen salam has in mind but has not, has not uh, elaborated upon in the, in the dua itself, has taken them in the aggregate to, to make the dua brief. Well, but in the commentaries, as I said, and, and, and in Anisul Layl, the, the sins that are defined as those that bring down calamities, that bring down misfortunes, rather, um, are, 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 are sins that have been spelled out by Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. May Allah's peace be upon him. And, and indeed, we are grateful to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam for numerous of his teachings. Our books are full of teachings from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, full of commentaries, full of explanations and elucidations, and this is one of them. He sets out three particular sins that, that bring, down, bring down misfortunes or afflictions. And the first of, the, of them is abandoning aid to those in affliction. You can see how serious the matter is. Those in affliction come to you and seek help in circumstances in which you can give help. Of course, if you cannot give help, then you, you cannot give help. You do not have the capacity. You are not answerable. But if, if, uh, if you can give help, um, and, and this is a person in affliction, then there is a duty to give help. It may not be a sin not to give help, but it has its consequences. Allah glorified and exalted says, um, you did not give help, you have committed sins, you need help yourself. 
you do not give help, I will not give you help. And so, and so the important thing is that, that we, we should give help at a time when there are people in afflictions, there are people who, who seek aid or assistance, abandoning aid to those in affliction. Is, is how it is defined in the books. Uh, so, it is important that we consider the, 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 the situation of our kith and kin, the situation of our brethren in faith, the situation of other human beings on earth, and give them help, particularly when they are in, in, in affliction. If we can give help, we, can, we do give help. The whole purpose of creation is that al mu'minuna ukhwa the the holy quran says the believers are brethren so if they are brethren they help each other the quality that allah likes most is the quality of charity and this is understandable because he has that quality in himself he exercises his quality of charity more than his other qualities and which is a great blessing to us sinners because we can then repose hope that he will forgive us our sins out of his charity and we shall see more of this in Dua'i Kumail as we consider as we, as we can continue and progress in considering the teachings in Dua'i Kumail how his charity is what we primarily rely on he <clears throat> therefore expects that we will also be charitable in keeping with his name. And, and we've already discussed the effect of, the, of Asma'ul Husna, the names, the, the, the beautiful names of Allah glorified and exalted. And so in, in keeping with that quality of his, of Ra'uf, of Rahim, of, 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 of um, Rahman, he, in keeping with his ch qualities of char charity, we should, we should uh, be charitable ourselves also and help those within our limited resources who are in affliction and, and, and who need help, who call for help. But if we hear the call of, for help and do not help, we abandon giving help uh, at all to those, to those in affliction, then what chance do we stand from receiving help from Allah? then the fear is that Allah might bring down misfortunes for us, which we would be amply deserving anyway for our own sins. Well, the greatest, the greatest uh, hadith, the, uh, the most serious one, is the, is the hadith from uh, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. He told so many people, and, in, and, and, and may, said this in his khutbah on the day of Ashura, that when I make the istighatha, hal min nasir in yansuruna, those who hear my istighatha, who they hear me ask for help, and do not give me help which they can give, then Allah will, 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 uh, will not help them and will indeed descend misfortunes on them. And they will meet misfortunes. Tanzulul bala. He 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 will he will he will bring down he will bring down um, uh, misfortunes misfortunes for them. And cautioned people that if you hear my 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 call for help, make sure you do help me. And if you do not want to help me, run away from here. Run so far that you may not even be able to hear my call. But the call is there. The call is there till today. Is there anybody who will help me in my cause? The cause of uh, Imam Hussein -Salam, was the cause of saving Islam, of having Islam in its pristine form, not in its corrupted form. And hence the importance that that call be answered all the time. And if we do not answer the call of Imam Hussein -Salam, Hal min nasir in yansuruna, is there anybody is there any helper who will help us this time when we need help in saving the pristine Islam, in not giving away Islam to Yazidism, to corruption, to evil, to, to, to sinning? That is the call of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and that is the call that we need to, to answer, for his was a glorious call 
from an infallible that Allah glorified and exalted in his mercy sent down for our salvation. May Allah give us the good fortune of obeying him and of answering the calls of those in, 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 in affliction. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.